name's Aaron Fisher. I'm here today with Alexander Slemmer and our little tech goblin, uncredited. Uh, we're here from Conjure Community, World's Best Magic Club, and today we're going to be looking at the magic of one of the greatest club and stand-up parlor magicians of all time, Paul Patassi. So do us a favor, real quick, hit follow or subscribe, and you'll be notified the next time we go live with a show like this one, or who knows, maybe even better. Alex Slemmer, how the hell are you? I'm great. We're going to watch some more Paul Patassi. I've been having so much fun watching all this uh, this stuff from this guy. He's really, really great. It's from another era, but you can see all of the, all the things that you want good magic to have. All those elements are there. And it's, uh, you know, I say it often, inspiring. It's why, you know, why we put this thing together. We try to find magicians that just inspire you to just be a good magician. And it looks like today he's going to be doing some card stuff. So you know what I say to that? Yay! Yeah. It's only like card stuff. I get excited when I hear there's going to be card stuff. <laughs> so let's yeah. do it. Let's do this thing. It's going to be fun. We're going to get into it with uh, really it's sort of a classic, classic thing here. We'll, we'll get into it and we'll talk about it afterwards. I'm sure we'll have plenty to say. Speak Renny, yourself. be so kind. I'll shuffle this deck. You will be so kind, please. Now, just think a card. Did you think a card? Yes. The card you thought was black or red? Black. Black. Can you please hold your right hand like this? You only thought the card. Correct. The card is here in the deck somewhere, and except you, nobody here knows which card you thought. Correct. Can you tell us which card did you think? Do you want me to? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the six of clubs. The six of clubs. <laughs> Turn the top cloud. Oh, no. oh my God! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Wow. Now, Frank. Frank, are you married? No. Not anymore. No. <laughs> I like the idea. I do I like, too. I, <laughs> When you say it, it must have been a wonderful divorce. Oh, <laughs> uh, Frank, can you be so kind? Bend forwards. Just think a card. Okay. Did you think one? Uh -huh. Yes. Was the red or black? It was black. Black. Was the card which was a number or a picture card? A picture card. A picture card. We will try. This cannot, I cannot always get it. Can you tell me which card did you think? Ace of spades. The eight of spades. Ace. The ace of spades. Wait a moment. When I showed you the deck, have you seen the ace of spades in the deck? Or did you only think it? No, I saw it. This is impossible, my dear friend. Because <laughs> all the time I had the ace of spades in the deck. Favorite card? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. Which one? Three of hearts. Three of hearts. Three of hearts. The first person in my life who has the three of hearts as a favorite card. <laughs> I never saw anybody. They say ace of spades, they say anything. Three of hearts. I don't even know if I have a three of hearts in this deck. <laughs> <laughs> There's no three of hearts. It's gone. Look in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we are. OK, three of us. Let's shuffle the cards. Now, do me a favor. Pick out any card, but do not look at the card. Just take it out. Just take out one card. Now, don't, I told you not to look at the card, <laughs> but you did. Can you show what you took? No. Oh. <laughs> This time, you okay. promise you will not look. Huh. You just take out one card. One, 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 and don't look at it. Okay. Now, we have here 51 okay. cards left over. One card in your hand. Uh -huh. Which was your favorite card? Hearts. Show the card. <laughs> <laughs>
just a old school. Quick, first of all, just a quick welcome to all of our friends from Instagram. I just got news from corporate way up above Alex at our afternoon video watching party, among other places, is being streamed right over to the IG crew. So interesting, 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 because Paul Patassi is probably the most experienced magician ever to appear on Instagram. <laughs> it's very funny. It's very funny. Uh, so I would be very happy uh, if our friends at corporate would answer uh, this question that I'm typing in there. So the question then becomes to you, Alex. Wow, looks like Patasi has his table magic set and it looks like he is hanging out there doing uh, think a card stuff, kind of Burglacian think a card stuff. That was it. I think that that's that it's like a really good example of some of the stuff that I know that you and I talk about often and really love. It's just old school magic, man. He's using very basic techniques to accomplish miracles. And, uh, you know, if you know some stuff about magic, you might have picked up on what was happening there. Is but, it a shuffle? It's a shuffle deck, right? It's a shuffle deck. It's a shuffle so, deck. So you're getting a look. He's getting a look and he's like red or black. And then he's taking a whiff, right? He's taking a whiff and he's lifting or palming or switching and getting out. I'll say this, uh, he's making them take what he wants them to take in a very classical way. Show me this. Well, not all the time, right? I, he certainly had cards selected like this, which to use When he was doing the face up and face classical. down, it was the classical way. But didn't he, maybe this is just my memory because I'm watching it like a lay person and hearing that we're on a new streaming uh, platform and all this kind of stuff is happening. But, you know, in most cases there's revelations and then there's there's thinking of stuff and then there's revealing it, right? And so people were naming cards out loud. Uh, but I saw a couple points, what either looked like this or this, or, and I wasn't sure. Was he having people thinking of him that way or that way mm -hmm. or this way? Yeah, he, he was doing the same sort of thing that Burglis would do where it would be a spread. But I mean, he was doing the classical method, but just in a face up way. Right. And he's just going for a card. And if you go back and watch the footage and I encourage people that are that are here that are studying magic, go back and watch the footage. You'll see on the second one, he's having trouble. He missed. Right. And he had to he had to rescue himself out of that situation and have it be revealed in the pocket. Right. I don't think that that was the, that was the intended effect on that one. I got an idea. Let's go. This is because, look, for anyone who knows me or Alex, we can talk about think a card with a shuffle deck, with a stack deck, with a, with a deck that has been so glued together, it's not even a deck anymore. We, could, we can glue a deck of cards in so many different ways, it would have to even fool Teller. Although of course, it'd be so deceptive, he would not know no, nor admit that that happened to him because how could he know? So what I'd like to do, because I think this is a smart thing to do, is let's, now we're all together, let's move on to the next two pieces. And if we're lucky, maybe we'll come back and we'll take a look at that first one again. You like, like it? it? I like it. Oh, that is so exciting. Let's go. Let's get into the second one then and let's have some more fun. It's great. This in one's interesting. In former years in Germany. It's just interesting because it's different, but it's similar. You're going to see very similar things to things we've looked at in the past on this one, but it's interesting. Could I just say something before we get started? Yeah, we had a lecture with the great Tony Clark the other night, and he was doing this amazing Slidini material. Uh, I wish to God they hadn't changed, but you see that clear Lucite table that he's performing on? Yeah. The next time we get Tony Clark to teach us, we want him to use a table like that. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> a lot, because you can see all kinds of stuff going on that you might want to see if you were learning magic. And of course, that's part of Patassi's charm is that he's letting you see everything. And of course, there's nothing to see. Doesn't he remind you of a sort of a, a happy divorced man in the early 50s? <laughs> <It's pretty funny. laughs> in former years in Germany, the deck of cards held only 32 cards. For the game of Skat, which is the most famous game played in homes, they use 32 cards, which means the number two, three, four, five, and six are not existing in the deck. The deck start with number seven. Seven, eight, nine, ten, king, queen, ace. 
Jack, I forgot. May I ask you to count down those 32 cards on the table if they are really 32 cards? One, two. Loud voice, please. Four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 30. 32. Very good. So. <laughs> Frank, yes. take the cards. <coughs> y divide la baraja en el media para tener dos barajas iguales. <laughs> You're in the <shuffle>. No. <laughs> <laughs> I ask you to cut the deck in the middle and make two about equal heaps. <laughs> two. <laughs> no. No. If these he heaps are equal, okay. Close. Mm, pretty. Pretty close. Pretty close. Two packs. You take one of those two packs. Which one would you take? Take That's it, some. please. And count it down on the table, and I will show to you how you count. Wait, wait, wait. You count like this. One, two, three, four, five. Always you say five. You stop, please. You make a pause. OK. OK? Loud one, voice. Two, three, four, five. Can I ask you to take the other cards? Do you have a pocket? <coughs> No, I don't have a pocket. Do you have a bra? <laughs> no. <laughs> Could you take the cards and put them in there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Pretty good. Now, can I ask you to continue? You count until five? Again, one, two, three, four, five. On top? Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Pause. Work again. One, two. Three, four, five. Three times five is? Fifteen. When we have 15 cards on this side, how many cards does have Rene? Seventeen. Mathematics, congratulations. <laughs> Take the cards, please. Mm -hmm. Empty your little pocket up there completely. It's empty. Empty. Put the cards in. So, Rene. Yes. Seventeen cards here. No, 15. Uh, 15 cards here and 17, 17 with you. Okay. Would you be so kind and count the 17 cards on the table? Loud voice, yeah. please. <laughs> no, no pausing at No five. pause for you. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh. And the rest? Uh -uh. No, there's no more. <laughs> <laughs> Should I know? <laughs> Rene, Rene. Six more cards, please. I don't. <laughs> now we have to search. <laughs> Pat, there's another one. Can you put your arm on the cards? Put your arm on the cards. Frank, did you ever have any problem with the police? So far? Not lately. <laughs> Can you take your cards out and count them down here on the table? Okay. Without pause. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Stop. How many have more? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my oh. God. Hold it. <laughs> Put the six cards on top of the six, uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Mix together 21 cards, yes? Right. Take the 21 cards and sit, please, on top of them. <laughs> Eagle lies a little bit. <laughs> so we have now. Twenty-one on Frank. Under Frank. Twenty-one here. Yeah, under Frank. And eleven with you. Would you please count your eleven card loud? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One, two. <laughs> Can I search? <laughs> Frank. <I'm a> <laughs> <laughs> was there a slight lift? 
Can you, can you pay, take out the card from underneath your bottom? Count them on the table, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That's it. Show stopping. Show stopping material. It's great, right? It's, <laughs> it's great. Good. It's as good as it gets. And it's too much counting, like at every stage, but the counting makes it more interesting. You're like, wait a second, is this really happening? <laughs> it's good, man. Now, for starters, you know, Rob, I took your joke. Rob Fisher, a uh, member Rob Fisher made a funny joke in the chat. He said, someone needs to hire this fellow to work uh, scripting for Scotty York because, of course, <laughs> we've seen a, a lot of uh, classic magicians do their version of various tricks like this. And, you know, with the cards and the going in the ladies' brassiere and all this kind of stuff, we had an example of exactly how that stuff can be played in such a way as, it, as to make its not ideal impression on an, an audience, except perhaps if you happen to have caught one particular, one, one particular spectator's caught your fancy and you and her are in a bubble and together you both know what's on your minds and it's a beautiful thing, and sometimes a performer and his muse fall very much in love. But the rest of the time, people can leave the show feeling like maybe something inappropriate happened and maybe it was uncool. And so we were talking a little bit about how that would happen sometimes when Scotty York would do some otherwise beautiful magic. Um, what we just saw here, Alex, <laughs> was the exact lesson in how that material can be performed in such a way as to follow what you and I have called the prime directive. Of not creeping the people out. Don't yeah. creep out yeah, the yeah. ladies. <laughs> he definitely is really good at just pointing at the thing and letting your mind run wild and do the rest of the joke. Because he's, you know, I, I'm sure that he would be just as happy working for someone that was, that had never seen anything like that. You know, a child that had never seen any material like that, never seen jokes like that. And kept it real low key so for them it was just a magic trick but for the adults they fill in the blanks of all the innuendo and it's a different show for them and he just seems very at home doing both of those things i it's again i think it's just a guy who's done this material thousands of times right he knows where those punches are and how to play them it reminds me of the muppet show you know the muppet show used to be a show that right. ostensibly was for the children but your parents used to watch the show and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh so when you're watching a show with your child, you're painfully aware of something happens that you shouldn't be have allowed your child to see. Uh, but the opposite is also true. When you watch an act perform for you and perform equally for your child, it does nothing but, but exponentially increase your trust and faith in the performer because you know that the performer has got it all working just the way it should. There's no sense that either group of uh, constituents is getting the short end of the sheets under the under the bedfellows there. It's really like the sign of, of good comedy, really of a good movie, of a good story in general. When you, it can play to just multiple audiences like that at the same time, and everyone's feeling like they're in on a joke, and every audience member has their own version of being in on the joke. That to me, that's just good writing. That's just good entertainment, and you know. Like we keep saying about Paul, I mean, the guy has done this act so many times. He knows where all those places are. There's not a wasted second. He knows what's happening energetically throughout the whole routine. And that's, you know, that's how you can really understand how to decode those moments and, and be there with your audience rather than ever, ever against them. And uh, he, he always is their ally. He's always their friend and like a trusted storyteller, right? He's the, he's the narrator of the entire thing. And uh, you trust him and want him to be the guy. And it's, Elegant and beautiful. I love it. And very different. Like I said at the beginning, right? Very different from most of the cards across routines because he's like, there's not a moment where he's making the effect happen. It's almost like he's in on, not in on it. And he's like, what are you guys doing? Where are these cards? How are these cards moving around? Right? There's never a moment where he like takes credit for it. And now the effect happens, which is pretty different from most of the ways that we've seen 
a lot of professionals do this very routine, you know, a lot of the same techniques, but effect wise, pretty different. Can you tell me, is it easy for you to recall a stage by stage what the effect was? Uh, at the beginning, he had the two piles of cards dealt out, had the spectator take a pile, he took a pile, and the spectator counted out their cards, right? He gave the other pile of cards to the lady spectator. She then hid those cards in her own way. <laughs> and then uh, the male spectator counted out his cards again, and now he had more cards. And some of the cards were gone from the lady and she had to search herself like, where are those cards? She thought that there were still cards inside her clothing. And then eventually all of the cards went, he had her cover up those cards with her arms and all of those cards went into the man's pile except for two. And he kept, and remember it was the abbreviated uh, pack from another time that only had 32 cards. So it was, everyone knew there was 32 cards in that pack. So when there were two left, everyone was waiting for him to count out 30 onto the table. And then when that happened, they all burst into applause. But again, there's no like moment where he says, and now the cards go across. So there's no like, now the effect happens. It just was happening. And that's a uh, very interesting, just very interesting way to play that effect. An another interesting that's happening. We talk about this in our 3M uh, Miracle Man Method course, which is really all about the different aspects and layers of magic construction that come together to work on it. And we do in that something called the, the effect compass, where we find out that some of us are mechanics, you know, we, we really love the, the moves. We like to build upward from that, you know, through misdirection, through presentation and structure, performance, uh, unifying all those things together. Other people are natural born showmen and they have to sort of pick up technique along the way and make sure that it doesn't get in their way. Well, I think when we watch Patassi, we see a perfect example. Dance 10 looks three. We see a perfect example of a guy whose technique per se may cause some of you to blush if you're technically minded. But what you get to see is that his misdirection and that his structure and that his presentation and performance are so overbearingly beautiful, powerful and charismatic that wherever he puts his thumb when he palms a card, it might not be the right place. There may be a tell there technically, but it's not reading across to the audience because everything is so well integrated. Agreed. He's really, he's, it, it's the showman over the top, right? He's got them connected to him so tightly that they can't look away. They're right there with them. They're, they're, they've invested in his, uh, in his personality and the, and the effects that he's presenting. And he keeps, you know, despite the technique maybe not being as clean as some might like the structure is so good the effects are so good you're just you're you're with him in the communication of everything that's happening that you don't have a chance to really look away and i you know it, it doesn't matter <laughs> it just doesn't matter it's akin to like uh like mentalists like mentalists are doing generally pretty low tech sleight of hand stuff if they're using sleight of hand and it's all about the effect, right? And I think that Paul's elevating these effects to a place where they feel like real magic, which I think is why mentalism really works because it feels like you're really doing something like reading a mind or implanting a thought. And when you're playing with effects at that level where it seems like it's real, all of that stuff about technique, that goes out the window because they're with you, they're connected. They're trying to see the, the flower bloom in front of them, right? <laughs> Make that flower bloom that quick. Like you said, let's see it happen. You just want to see the flower bloom and they just, you know, they, they forget about the show part. It's like uh, forgetting about the wires on Peter Pan when you're watching the, uh, the play, right? Yeah, but, but and I also think, you know, uh, even on a more technical level, his, he is so in his body. Uh, and this is something that very few mentalists understand about that. They may be using similar techniques, but they can still be rather dead from the, from the wrists up. Uh, Patassi is in his body, he's in his arms and his torso and he's moving. And so where his thumb is in, in the mixture, if he's palming this card, as he's turning this way, as he's moving into this next beat, there's just too much dynamic movement and action happening for anything like that to happen. When you sit like Earl Nelson and you say, watch carefully i'm going to take the cards and i'm going to do something like this well you may need a lot more technical perfection there but notice how many of the tools of a performer 
are being chopped off. You're forcing all of that attention into this narrow, narrow spot in between here and there. And Patassi isn't doing that. His frame is as big as the stage, as big as the audience can take it. And so little minutia like where his thumb is going, well, it doesn't have such a spotlight on it. And you can really tell in a film where all of that misdirection and stuff doesn't work quite the same way. In order for it to work on screen, it's got to be so, like I say, all encompassing. It's got to be so thorough and and complete, a, a completely bound to spell, so to speak, so that it takes hold of your attention in the same way it does on stage and you don't have any clue what's happening. It's really just the most remarkable example. I'm going to look up that routine as soon as we're done in the uh, Magic of Paul Patassi, I think it's called. Uh, Lotus it's in the book. Yeah, yeah, it's in the and, book. That and, book is uh, awesome, by the way. <laughs> and I remember going up to the castle to have to get my copy from him and it was very exciting. But what a wonderful routine. What a wonderful example uh, of how to perform it. Just astonishing. I can't wait to see what's happening next. What's happening next. Yeah, let's get into this next one. This one's like another one of these big show pieces. Um, it just seemed like a good way to end this, uh, this whole discussion today is just to get into another big show piece, but a good, you know, good example again of Paul being uh, being Paul. Let's get into it. I will come now to a little experiment, which is an experiment for which I have brought a special deck of playing cards. Not all people possess special deck of playing cards. The one I brought here is a deck which has been in Spain issued about 10 years ago. In this deck of playing cards, there were only 1,000 printed for a charity affair, and I got one. Bear yeah. the signature of King Juan Carlos of Spain and Queen Sophia. All oh, wow, is this Lee Asher cards. talking? And now I want to do a special experiment with these cards. Young lady, yes. would you be the one to help me? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have here for you three pencils. You choose one of those three pencils which you will sign. Black, red, or blue. Your choice. Blue. Okay, we put the two others away. And you take now this stack of playing cards in your hands. Okay. Open it up and look if it is a normal deck of playing cards. After you have found out that it's really a normal deck of playing cards, you tell me yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Now, then will you be so kind, please, and take out any card of those 52 cards which you like. You have an absolutely free choice. You have to make up your mind today. <laughs> <laughs> did you find one? Yes, I did. Give me right at the back the rest of 51 cards. And you take now this card, take the felt pen you have chosen, yes, open it up, yeah? This is fun, funny felt and it only writes when it's open up. <laughs> and on the side where you can see the card, yes? First of all, I want you to show the card. To the left, to the right, so everybody can see the card. Yes? Now take that felt <coughs> pen, and on the side, not where the king and the queen signed, on the other side, on the opposite side, yes? <laughs> you put on your signature, not only initials, full signature. Okay. And the cell phone number, if possible. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done that? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now, gi give me back the... We will ask a gentleman as well. You have been already involved in the show. You were not yet involved in the show. Give to the gentleman behind you the third pen. And you as well, on the same side where the young lady has signed, sign the card. From you, I do not need the cell phone number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time. Done. Very good. Put the cards back here. Thank you very much. You remember the card? Yes, sir. Yes. We go to shuffle the cards first. Who is a good shuffler? Young man, how good are you in shuffling? Hmm? <laughs> Would you be so kind, come a little bit closer to me? 
Take the cards and shuffle. I have for you something here. Can you please stand up? Yes? I have a wallet. A wallet. Against magician sealed up. Will you please hold that wallet? With two hands. Okay? And stand here behind the table. Okay. Young man, have you shuffled? Yes. Vaguely, barely, or well? Well. Well. Can I ask you, sir, do you remember? Thank you for the pencil. What was the card you signed? King of diamonds, you believe. What do you believe? King of diamonds. King of diamonds. <laughs> she, believes, she believes the same. Would you be so kind, please, who have shuffled the cards, look for the king of diamonds. You know how the king of diamonds looks? I think so. Little bit reddish. <laughs> <laughs> he had a party yesterday evening. Did you find him already? No. No. Can you please work faster? <laughs> no, it's not in there. What is? What do you mean it's not in there? It's not in there. It's not there. Madam, the king of diamonds is not in there. It's funny. Every time I do the trick, the same thing happens. <laughs> Would you be so kind, please? And hold this wallet high and pull those strings down and throw them down here on the table. One by one. Yes? Very good. Wonderful. You're very talented in taking strings down. Oh, thank you. So open up the wallet. You find something in there, that thing. You take out and show to the audience this side and that side, both sides. Turn it around. Yes. I ask you, what is this? No idea. I will tell you what it is. These are two metal plates, twice, two. Metal plates, nine times sealed. Five on one and four on the other side, OK? Can you tell me the name of this metal? No. No idea. No. This metal in America is called aluminum. <laughs> in Europe, it is called aluminum. Okay. And in Japan, it's called aluminum. <laughs> These are two aluminum plates with nine strings around. Can you be so kind, please, and touch to take down the nine strings one by one and throw them down on the table? I'm sorry I gave you so much work, <laughs> but, but for your work, you will get 50% oh, okay. of my applause. <laughs> okay? Now hold them flat, please. Open them up. There's a card in. Take the card out. Look at it. Can you see your signature there? Turn it around. That's one of the marquee tricks in the book. Right. That's right. It's a real one of the real show pieces. That's like as clean as a card doll wallet gets, and the with the nests that are going on and all of those things that are around everything, it makes it more impossible than it could ever be. You know, I think it's a uh, pretty elegant and wonderful, great show piece. Great show piece. Yeah, it's just a tremendous trick. You know what I mean? Everyone knows the principle. Everyone knows somewhere between a nest of boxes and a card to wallet, they've got the trick. But uh... It certainly is the way he does it, right? Everything is not cliche. That's right. That's right. He's definitely got an interesting slant and an interesting point of view on all these tricks that we've seen him, that we've been watching him do. They're all showstoppers with his handlings, right? But they're all classics of magic. And to me, watching a guy, a guy like Paul Potassi, it's just breathing life into these old classic pieces, pieces of magic that maybe you've just read on a cold, hard page. You know, you just read in a book and being able to see a, a professional actually make it into something that's interesting and that you care about and that you're invested in like that's it that's what we're shooting for <laughs> that's what we're all shooting for as performers is to try to you know get something that feels like that but just as us doing these things and uh i, I just love the example honestly i love the example it's absolutely wonderful now robert battle has a question about whether we should be more dramatic with the magic moment and that's a fine question and as we promised for our members uh, we're going to go uh, have a
have a little after show here where we're going to rewatch that first routine, the think a card, and see if we can dissect what's going on a little bit for the benefit of our members. So for those of you who are just joining in for the fun on Instagram or YouTube or wherever the heck you are, thanks for joining us today. Do us a quick favor and click follow or subscribe so you'll be notified the next time we go live, which will be in a couple of days. So thank you all for watching. Stick around if you're in the club and we will do the after show together now.